Chris, when I was wandering around these halls uh, between 1964 and 1968, the hot subjects at the time were neurophysiology, circuitry, sleep and wakefulness cycles, uh, communication between the midbrain and the thalamus area and the cerebral cortex and the meanings there. That was the typical. Good. Yeah, right, <laughs> sure, sure. It was a, just a little before me, but that was when. But that's okay. when I came. Uh, and uh, now I come back, uh, it's great to be back, but I'm, I'm almost lost at the a tremendous variety of different state-of-the-art ways of thinking about the brain. Uh, as the director of the Brain Research Institute, uh, uh, what are some of these new uh, 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 integrative areas that are the areas of interest of, the, of contemporary brain scientists? Well. One thing which has changed, I think, a lot is the breadth of models which people use now. So, C. elegans, the worms, mm. flies, yeah. um, zebrafish have become a very, very big model in understanding neuroscience, Mou mice, and um, less so now rats, and less with primates, which was a, which, which was major ma right. major and, models and, and in when the fifties and sixties. Now it's like uh, cats and dogs Do and and, uh, and, yes. and monkeys uh, during those times. There's big 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 changes there. The mice are a very very strong models because we can do genetic manipulations with these with these uh, models. So we can take away genes. We have these knockouts. We can put in genes. So we have transgenic animals which which um, express mutant genes so we can really really s m generate models which are relevant to human disease such as Huntington's or mm. Parkinson's mm. or addiction mm. we can take away the muopiate receptor for instance mm. which is responsible for the rewarding effects of um, of nicotine uh, cannabinoids and alcohol and and when we do that those the rewarding effects go Mm. Well, they're mm. much, much more attenuated. So we can, we can play with the genes in these models. Now, if we go down lower, the power of genetics even becomes stronger. So with flies and with C. elegans, the, the genetics is incredibly powerful. So you can, you can uh, swap genes out and, and uh, map the function of genes very, very easily in those animals. Um, so the, 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 the extent the, the models have changed, I think, since the 60s, for sure. Mm. And uh, I think that's an important... Um, and so as that has occurred, what are the areas that, that contemporary brain research works on? What are, what are some of the, the broad categories that are now the hot areas? Well, the very hot areas are... Uh, one of the very hot, hot areas is optogenetics. Now, optogenetics is a, is, is, is a new area which has is, which was, which is developed with the finding of these um, uh, opti uh, optical channels which you can activate or inhibit certain um, cells. And so... By light. By light. Through laser... Th through laser light. Right. And um, so you can genetically express these um, channels in specific neurons or specific cellular populations and turn them off or on. And this is becoming a very, very powerful model to, to mm. understand the circuits mm. which, which are involved in different behaviors. Mm. This is one of the biggest new areas, or one of the major new areas which has evolved. Epigenetics is another new area which is evolving very fast, understanding what controls the expression of, of, of different genes and how they're modulated by different inputs. And this is a big area uh, in, in the addiction field. What, does, what, what happens when you treat an animal with a drug? What happens to the epigenetic profiles of individual cells which you know are involved in those? So it's what is the, the genetic expressions going to be after you, you, you have uh, given those kinds of drugs? Yes, yeah, so or you've had a certain modified. behavior. Right. What, what, how, how are the um, epigenetic... Um, how, how is the epigenetics changed to change the expression of certain genes in those cells? And so you see the expression in the cells and you see the behaviors and you try to relate the two, obviously. That's right. right. That's, that's right. And that, 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 that's one of the areas. The other big area, of course, is imaging. Imaging, which uh, UCLA has, has a very strong reputation for, 
is 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 a very is is, is especially MRI has been incredible in in identifying certain areas of brain which were involved in certain functions and pet imaging of course was developed here mm. and um, has, has also been very important in, in identifying areas of the brain and looking at specific uh, molecules like receptors for dopamine are easy, are easy to see with uh, pet imaging. Mm. You can see what happens when, when you uh, treat with drugs or when you're looking at um, long-term um, addicts. So this is an example controls. where you can integrate the molecular and the very gross. That's because right. we normally think of imaging as just affecting broad brain areas in in the time frame of, of seconds because it's blood flow or different things that you're, you're 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 able to see but through now these techniques you're saying you can actually relate what we're studying on the molecular level mm -hmm. with what you're seeing in the imaging yes that's right that's right it's it's it, it, we are we're able to start integrating different areas now because of the, the basically the uh, technical advances which have happened in, in the last 20 30 years is there any way to prognosticate you going 20, 30 years into the future of what, of what we can do other than, you know, we'll know more about everything. Is there any, anything we can say about where, where the, the scientists think we'll be? Where I think that we're going to be, obviously we're going to have genetic information, which is going to be for everyone. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting down there. It's probably around five to 10,000. Um, dollars now for a complete oh. genome sequence. Mm. It's 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 going to be a thousand, you know. It's it's going to be a thousand soon. It's, you're you're going to have your whole genome sequence. That's going to give you the baseline. Then there's going to be much more effective imaging techniques. I think developed. I, I think imaging will be one of the areas which will still blossom and will be get will will have much more. Um, we ha we'll have imaging techniques which are which are which are much higher resolution, and able to detect specific um, aspects of 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 the brain, the specific chemical releases, uh, which can all actually be done now with with uh, some types of um, MRI. You can you can you can detect um, not only specific substances, but you can also um, detect pathways now mm. with. Uh, with um, with, with MRI, special MRI techniques. So I think imaging is going to expand greatly and I think it's going to be a very important tool. Genetics and epigenetics are going to be very important tools. Um, one other area which seems to be blossoming is this deep brain stimulation. I mean, we're going kind of going back to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to Jim Olds, but I think really we are going to get um, uh, models where we can stimulate different areas and have integrated circuitry, which which actually, you know, you get you get impulses in in certain areas of the brain, and then you can um, there go and st and stimulate other areas. Mm. And I, I see that as as happening as well as as, as an area of of um, great development in um, neuroscience.